Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Welcome, Fit Mama, to episode 33. You are a queen. Treat your king. And this episode is about your relationship to your significant other, whoever that may be. So put this in a context for you. I want to talk about your conversation within your own head, your connection with your partner, and the words that you're saying, the actions you're taking. And I want to get down to the goods about sex and body image around sex. I want to talk today about the fact that you're a goddess. You are a goddess, and are you acting like a goddess? Are you treating your man or your woman in a way that they deserve to be treated, like the god or goddess they are? I want you to ask yourself this question today because, you know, being a fit mama all starts with love, and it starts with self-love, yes, And we talk a lot about that, but the love that is going on in our homes, the love that we connect with our children, the love that we have for our family and our life, it really all starts with the connection we have with ourselves. And then next in line with our significant other. And I was at a retreat this past weekend, which was the Ancient Wisdom Retreat, and it was talking about the divine feminine. And I learned a lot, and I just loved the experience of really harnessing my own inner goddess. And I came to a lot of conclusions, and I came to a lot of realizations about my own inner goddess and where I was holding back and where I was not letting the true me come through in a a really loving way and in a way that felt really, really nurturing to me and to my partner. And, you know, I have a really great relationship with my partner and, you know, I call him my partner very rarely. And what actually happened in this retreat was that she, being Mira, the woman who facilitated the retreat, was talking about the fact that, you know, partner isn't a great word to use in a significant relationship, such as a husband or wife or parents, uh, you know, who are together raising their children or whatever the case may be in this God and goddess, queen and king relationship, because it claims that they're equal. And while we do want to be equal in in some ways in our relationship, we want to be treated equally, we want to be treated fairly, we want to be looked at with you know, appreciation and be grateful and all that. But when it comes to this relationship of husband and wife or, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case may be, it's really about the connection that you have where it's not exactly equal. It's different. One person is dominating sometimes. One person's more submissive sometimes. One person has these vibes sometimes like the yin and the yang. And this this difference between the two and the non-equal partner thing is really where that fieriness comes in and that passion and that love. And, you know, that goddess, you are not equal, you are not a god, you are a goddess, and we are women, and we have these special aspects about us that are we really harnessing? You know, there was the feminine movement that happened, and I don't know the first thing about feminism and the movement, but I do know that there was a time that not so long ago where, you know, women want to be treated equally. They want to be just like the men. And while that's great, especially in the workplace and being paid equally, et cetera, obviously, you know, we aren't men. And why do we want to be? Why would we want to be? And why would we not want a man? Like, I don't need a man or I don't need someone to help me, whether it's a woman or a man, to live with or to pay my bills or whatever. I get the independence detail around it. But what about just treating your man, I'm going to use the word man in this case, but fill in whoever for you, 
why not treating your man with the adoration and the love where you look up to him and you look at him with these eyes of he's a God to me. And, you know, this is hard sometimes when we're raising kids and we feel like our the husband is another kid that we have to raise. And this is where issues lie, right? And when we're thinking we have to parent our husband or our partner, if they we're feeling that, then that is makes you feel like crap. It surely doesn't make you feel sexually attracted to them when you're like, pick up this, do this, drop off this. And it's only logistics around the kids and you're exhausted and you get into bed and he touches you and you're like, get away. And you don't want any more people touching you. A quick interruption from today's episode to share with you one of our show sponsors, Best Self Journal. I don't know about you, but I am a bit of a journal junkie. I love goal setting and planning and executing in a way that makes goal getting fun. It wasn't until I was gifted this Best Self Journal by a coach I was working with that I fell in love with it and now give it to all the fit mamas I begin working privately with. The ease of using this journal and the laying out of the priorities that are needed to move forward on tasks and epic happenings in your life is so simple and fun with this journal. Have you discovered the best self journal yet? I guarantee that using this journal will move you towards feeling your best. And I just ordered the Smart Marks bookmark and the weekly planner pad, which I am so excited for, and I will share how much I am loving those in the future. Productivity, organization, and focus are keys for fitting in all the things that you want, making sure that you are achieving the things you set out for yourself. I'm sure you know how good that feels to be organized, planned, and ready to execute. Click the link below and get your own best self journal today. I get it. There are those days where we're just done and they usually come after weeks when we're just done and months when we're done and years when we're done and we don't say anything or we don't set boundaries or we don't take care of ourselves or shave our legs or not shave our legs if that makes us feel like a goddess. What makes you feel like a goddess, Fit Mama? What makes you feel like a goddess, the queen that you are, the beautiful, incredibly gorgeous, stunning, sexy, beaming ball of light that you are? You are bountiful beauty within you is pouring out of you if you're not masking it with negative self-talk or self-deprecation or feeling like crap about yourselves because people are treating you like crap because you let them for far too long. You are a goddess, Fit Mama. You are a queen. How you treat yourself inevitably, inevitably rubs off on how you treat others, how others treat you, how you treat your man, how your man treats you. Is he treating you like his mother? Is he looking at you like his mother? Because that's how you're acting. And I'm not placing blame. Maybe he deserves to be kicked around a little because his mother didn't do that. You don't take that place. That's not your role. And when we mess up and blur these lines around mother and wife or woman and queen to your man, your king, issues come up. And this is what erodes marriages. This is where he looks the other way or you go find a new person to be with who give you the attention you want because your man is acting like a boy. And when is it going to be that you decide to not let this happen anymore? When is that going to be? What is it going to take? You know, this is what I ask my clients when they're struggling, when they're suffering, when they're frustrated, when they're at wit's end, when they aren't dealing well with things and they reach out and I'm there for them. You know, the first things we work through, and sometimes it takes months to get to this point, is what is it going to take? What does rock bottom look like? Not having sex for months, not masturbating ever, not touching yourself, not looking at yourself like you're a goddess when you look in the mirror. 
criticizing yourself, finding flaws, what's stopping you? What's really stopping you, Fit Mama, from looking in the mirror and seeing the beauty emanating from every pore in your face? Instead of looking at things you need to pluck or change, where's the beauty that you can see when you look in the mirror? It's there if you choose to look at it, just like the hair that you need to pluck is there if you choose to look at it. But what are you choosing to look at? You know, I was really, I was really turned on after this retreat. And I say turned on in a way that, yeah, okay, sexually turned on, maybe not while I was there, but when I came home and when I, or when I started thinking about my man, yes, I was turned on because I thought I am a goddess. I am a queen. And where am I not owning my kingdom or his kingdom and making it our castle together where we bring passion into every moment. And, you know, my husband and I are quite affectionate and we make out or kiss or snuggle or whatever in front of our kids. We, you know, we have sex when they're not around or when they're sleeping and when they're not in our room or in our bed. And we are very passionate together. And I'm very grateful for, we have a very exciting time when we're together. And one of the reasons is because we're not always together and he travels a lot. And, you know, absence can make the heart grow fonder. And in our case, it really is one of those things that we're together and we have a lot of passion and we're not together for very long. So maybe if we were, perhaps it might just get same old, same old. But if it's same old, same old for you, what needs to change? What needs to change with you? Not what needs to change with him. Okay, sure, he could clean up or do that or pay the bills or whatever you feel like he needs to do. But where is this your responsibility to own your goddess, to get into your goddess mode. And what's going to get you there? What's your queen mode? What's your, I'm the sexiest human. And, you know, I came home and my husband was supposed to come home and, you know, he ended up getting delayed and his flight got canceled and I didn't get to see him. And, you know, I had a real passionate moment with myself because I felt so turned on and by him and by my man and my king and my God and someone whom I love and takes such good care of me and who I am so grateful to be in a relationship with. And it brought up all the good stuff. And, you know, however you need to get into the mode to bring up the good stuff, let it then rub off on you. And I really say that with, with, a. Um, a meaning that, you know, when is it time for you to love you, to get into your goddess mode, to touch your body? And that was one of the exercises we did at this retreat was, you know, she put on a song and we all closed our eyes and we just touched ourselves, you know, not in a sexual way per se. We weren't naked or anything. We were fully clothed and we were, you know, moving ourselves on our mat and just feeling our bodies. You know, when's the last time you said, I love you to your toes or to your elbow and to your knee? You know, we always look at what's wrong. We always go, this isn't working right this is frustrating me or I'm tired or I'm lazy or I'm fat or this cellulite is not what I want and I want to change something or this hair and whatever and on and on and on we go. When is it I love you? When is it I honor you? I feel you. You know, I touch my belly and I love it. You know, I came home and my daughter, five years old, God bless her, she's the cutest thing. She hugs me and then hugs me. And within one second, she's lifting my shirt, kissing my belly. You know, I'm bent over and it's flubbery as she calls it. You know, this is a word that, you know, this isn't often associated with something we want to feel. And I grew up when I loved on my grandmother and my mother's flubbery arms, you know, the, the, what I used to call fluff them under their arms, you know, this was forbidden. And I was just just a young girl who loved touching soft things. And so is she, you know, she loves her stuffed animals and she loves chubby arms and chubby belly. When I bend over, you know, she's like bent belly. I love bent belly. And it brings up everything for me, which I was 
grown and raised to say, I don't want to feel fat. I don't want to feel chubby. I don't want to feel like I have belly rolls. And she loves that about me. And when can I love that about myself? Because it's beautiful. Because let that be my safety. Let that be my big hug to myself. And you know, now I touch my belly and when I have rolls or when I'm saying that old story to myself, oh, this is rolling over here or this looks fat or oh, this, you know, I might change clothes to that fit me and don't accentuate something that isn't feeling like it fits anymore. And wearing clothes that honor you, wearing things that make you feel beautiful, not fitting in something that's a size that you used to fit in and then realizing that it doesn't fit anymore and you're standing there berating yourself. You don't deserve that. You are a queen. Treat yourself like a queen and a goddess and treat your man, treat that person in your life who you revere, who you love. There's a reason you first got together. And, you know, I listen to Dr. Laura and I like this woman named Dr. Laura. She's on Sirius XM radio. She's also has a podcast and a just Google her, Dr. Laura Schlesinger is her name. And she's a beautiful woman. She's 75 and she talks about sex and she talks about relationships and she teaches a lot of people, a lot of good stuff on a radio show. And I listen to it every day, whenever I'm driving around, if I can. And, you know, she talks and has a book, actually, The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands. And I love the name of that. And I've recommended this to my clients in the past. And, you know, I listen to her and I've known all the concepts of the book just from listening to her for the last five years. And, you know, it's really about creating a kingdom that your king can come home to. And, you know, sometimes you, it gives you, you know, it gives you the vibes too about the belly roll. It gives you the vibes of like, well, I'm a woman and I don't need a king or I'm, a, you know, what is that? Where does that come from? And where's this old feminist thing of, I don't need a man. I don't need to treat him this way. And what about me? And I get that, you know, we don't always feel like having sex and we're the ones breastfeeding and cleaning and doing whatever. Well, get a cleaner and breastfeeding is a gift and start looking at the things in your life that you're feeling are depleting you. Look at them and why are they depleting you and how can you let go of them and treat your man like a king? If you need to stay at home instead of go off to work and be stressed all day, do it. He will honor it. He will. And Dr. Laura and I have now embodied this with my clients. You know, if you're going to be the woman that you want to be from staying at home with your children, or if you're going to be the woman you want to be because going to work is that's where you're meant to be, honor it. But not because it's someone else's wish for you. Honor it. And for me, I feel best when I'm not working outside the home and I'm at meetings or I have to get somewhere early in the morning to help someone else out. I love helping people, but I have to take care of myself, my man, my kids, my home first. And I don't like cleaning. So I hire someone to clean. I don't like paying the bills. I have someone who pays my bills. I do things that I am good at and that maximize my strengths. And if I'm miserable, nobody's happy. Nobody. So where do you need to honor you? And yeah, it sounds selfish. And I, you know, I've gotten through the feeling of selfishness. And my own mom used to tell me, you're very self-absorbed, Jen, you're so self-absorbed. And you know, people in my life know I'm there for them when they need me. And you know, I'm very much available to other people. But yes, Call me self-absorbed if that means I need to go to bed when I'm tired, or it means I want to snuggle with my kids instead of go out to a different party or whatever, work outside the home or whatever, you know, people think I need to be doing. I'm over what people think I need to be doing. And I'm ready to be the loving fit mama that I know I can be by honoring this goddess and queen within me and bringing her out to every situation, especially around my man, my partner, my person, my go-to, right? My anchor, the person who does for me the things that I know I deserve, right? People are treated badly and they go, oh my gosh, someone's treating me badly. Okay. Well, where are you letting them do that? How are they getting away with that? Sometimes the stories I hear, I go, I wouldn't take that. If someone spoke to me that way, 
I would never speak to them again, right? Oh, but they're, you know, they're this and we justify, right? We justify, justify, justify. No, right? No. Why did you pick that person? Why did you pick that man? Why did you pick him to be your guy, your person? Think back to that. And why are you not honoring him anymore the way you used to honor him when you first dated? You know, when you had that dream of, oh, what could be the future, this beautiful marriage, whatever your dreams were, who was he in that dream? And how has that changed now? Look at it. Look at it. Face it. Don't ignore it. It's painful, yes, but it's where you got to look. It's where the beginning happens for being a fit mama for life. A quick break here from our podcast today to talk about one of our show sponsors, my program, The 21 Days to Love Your Body. I talk about this on some of the Fit Mama podcast episodes, but this is truly where the work in to your workout begins. This 21-day program allows you to go through a new type of goal setting. Creating and signing a contract that feels good to you, that you can live by, something realistic. This allows you to break down over three weeks, identifying your motivations, your barriers, understanding how to listen to your body, accept where you're at, embrace your life, take responsibility for where you're at. This calls you to a higher place through visualization and planning, forming new beliefs and tapping into the power of gratitude and love. This allows you to nurture yourself and enjoy the process by celebrating you, lowering your stress, understanding your willpower, catching up with your support system that starts from within. Understanding the underneath what is going on in terms of what is affecting the behaviors you engage in all starts with this program. I encourage this and this has helped so many fit mamas around the world. I know the mindfulness and the habits you're going to form over these three weeks filling in this fillable PDF journal that you can print out and fill out or fill it out right on your computer. This is the missing link. I know you'll love it and I know you're going to get a lot from it. Have a great day and enjoy. You can find it on lovefitmama.com or jenoliver.com. All the foundations, all the Fit Mama pillars and all the things I write about in my book, The Love Fit Mama Way. Transforming the core of motherhood, Fit Mama, begins with you. Transforming your core. Your body image begins with you. Losing weight does not cure a negative body image. Losing weight does not cure a negative body image. Pause. Think about that. Where are you not loving you? Where are you not setting boundaries, drawing the line in the sand? What action do you need to take for you? Not who do you need to change? Who do you need to get back to? Where do you need to go to, to be the loving wife? Not to bitch and complain and to nag, How about to create the kingdom your king can come home to? Even if he works in the home, where's the sanctuary? Where can you make the bed that you can honor him in? Let him lay there. Do to him what he wants you to do. What you want to do. What you wanted to do when you first met him. When you first wanted to honor him. What does he deserve? How does he deserve to be treated? And how do you deserve to be treated? You know, my man and I, we text back and forth, and that's one of our four plays. We text a lot, and if someone saw the text, I'm like, you know, if I'm realizing sometimes where I'm laying my phone down in my home, and, you know, my kids read now, so I'm quite cognizant of that. But, you know, we sext, we talk in advance of us connecting or reconnecting because that feels good to us, and it gets us excited to see each other. And, you know, he... He hears from me what I want to do to him, what I want to say to him when I see him, what I want to touch, right? And why not? Why not? Why do you do that only when you're dating? Why do you only do that when you're on Tinder or when you're trying to 
snag someone or keep them. You know, keeping him, keeping him comes from keeping the flame alive, reminding yourself every day how you want to be treated by your man, how he wants to be treated by you. You know, he writes me back, this is what I want to do to you. I can't wait to come and pleasure you, right? And yes, I deserve that. And that's what I like reading and feeling, saying, hey, yeah, I deserve that. Yeah, I deserve that. And you do too, Fit Mama. You deserve someone craving you, wanting to honor you, excited to see you. Why not? Begins with you wanting that for you, putting in the time to pleasure you, to work out, to make your body feel the way you want to feel. There's pleasure that comes from working out, the endorphins, right? Yeah, sex feels good. Masturbating feels good. You can't do it all day long. What can you do to honor you so that it gets exciting for the time you are with your partner? Why not set up a beautiful scene for your Yeah, call him your partner. Call him whatever you want if that makes you feel good. But if it makes you bring down a level and feel unsexy, ditch that word. What word do you want to use? What sexiness can you use? I was listening to a radio show, Maria Menounos, and I'm planting this seed here out to the public. I'm manifesting. I want to be on her show. She is a brilliant woman, beautiful, kind, loving woman, Maria Menounos. If you don't follow her yet or know her, she is amazing. I love her and she's just so beautiful. She has incredible guests on her show and she's on Sirius XM Stars, channel 109. And she has a podcast too, Maria Menounos. I subscribe to her beautiful podcast. She has amazing guests and you got to look up this lady, Kasha Urbaniak. Okay. I listened to this radio show with her, Kasha Urbaniak. She's a dominatrix. Ooh, right. I don't know anything about dominatrix, right? But I could, and I probably have things in my mind that I know about, but I started looking up and looking up her and looking into after I listened to her speak for an hour, this woman is brilliant. She is so smart. She has so many degrees. She studied Taoism and the connection she makes with Tao and the the way. Taoism is an ancient Chinese text and it's a religion, but she doesn't talk about it in the religious sense per se, but it's really about the present and it's, it's just so high vibe. I love it. And I I mean, look her up, Kasia Urbaniak, K-A-S-I-A-K, no, K-A-S-I, Kasha, I-A, Kasha. Yeah, Kasha, Urbaniak. Anyway, she's beautiful. She's amazing. Ugh, I'm going to follow her. I got to find her. I need to connect with this woman. I learn her stuff. I want to take her course. Anyway, she's amazing. But she talks about the way you speak to a man. And men are warriors. Men are kings. Men are gods. Men are primates. Men are men. Men don't need a lot to keep them happy. Treat your man. Treat him like a king. Honor him when he walks through the door. Love on him. Compliment him. Do you know how emasculating it is when you bitch at a man all day? They don't feel good. They don't want to have sex even with you especially, but they want to love you. You are their queen. You are their goddess. And when you two together see yourselves as the God and goddess, the king and queen, and your home as the kingdom, and your kids as these beautiful beings that you created together, that you can love and honor and teach and learn from, most importantly, learn from. It's a treat. Your life is a treat. You get to have amazing sex with someone that you love. And whether that's your, you know, the father of your kids, or if, you you know, you've had a, a divorce or a breakup or it's been traumatic, it's time to go and focus on you, Fit Mama, and your connection to yourself, the core of you. The self care begins with taking time every day to honor you. You know, and this retreat I went on was Kundalini Yoga. And if you haven't searched or looked at Kundalini Yoga yet, Kundalini is this this passion, this energy, this drive, this beautifulness that comes from within the chakra deep in your root, deep in the pelvis, right? This is your sex. This is where creation is. This is where you created your humans. This is where you had sex with your 
man or however you conceived your baby, this is a very coveted womb space. So put your hand on your belly, honor you, speak to yourself with love, with kindness. You're a goddess. You're a queen. Treat yourself. Touch yourself. Look in the mirror and love yourself. Find things to love. Find everything to love. Doesn't matter how fat or skinny or stretch marks you have. Admire your nipples. Admire your breasts. Admire your belly. Admire your butt. Admire your hair on your vagina and your lips. Admire them. Feel them. Touch them. Revere them. Love them. They are yours. This body, this one body, Fit Mama, is yours to love. Kiss it. Let someone kiss it for you. Let someone in. Do the work to heal the trauma that's stopping you from letting someone in. You know, I'm pretty honest and raw on these podcasts. You know that now. And, you know, it took me a long time to really let a man, my man, this man, the man I've chosen to spend my life with in. It takes a lot and it requires a lot of work, but it's worth the work because you're a queen. You deserve to be treated like a queen. Your body is a gift, a gift to your man. It's a gift to you first. Love it. Treat it with love. It's an honor to touch your body. It's an honor for someone else to touch your body. If you've been violated, it imprints on your cells. It's there in your memory forever. Do the work. Whatever that means for you, reach out, get help, ask for help, reach out to me. I can help you or I can find someone who can help you. I know it. But the work begins with you. The queen you are begins with you letting her out, letting the goddess shine, wearing things that honor the goddess within you, feeling good with what you wear what you eat, who you spend your time with, what you do, every moment of every day, living a life that honors you and honors your man. He's your man. Treat him like your king. Treat him to your body. Treat him. Let him look at your body. Put on things in public or in the bedroom that he loves. Wear things that he finds you sexy in. It's probably nothing at all. Wear nothing around him. Be naked. Wear no bra. Go topless. Do whatever makes you feel good that honors you. Show it off to your man. Send him sexy pictures and notes. Tell him what's waiting when he comes home. Excite him. Excite yourself. You deserve it. Let yourself be loved, Fit Mama. It feels so good. It does. And it's taken me a long time to get to this place, but it was and is worth it. Every moment of every day, I feel it's a gift to touch my body, to let someone else touch my body in a way that lets me feel good and surrender to let me feel pleasure Do you let yourself feel pleasure? Do you let yourself feel pleasure at the hands of yourself, at the hands of another? Can you let yourself today feel pleasure? You're already telling yourself the story of, oh yeah, maybe this weekend, maybe next time, maybe we go on vacation, maybe on his birthday. How about today? How about now? What are you doing? Where can you go? How can you look at yourself Look down, say I love you to your thighs that you've told so many times we're wrong, we're bad, we're negative, we're ugly. Change the conversation. That's all it begins with is changing the conversation. 
And I want to hear from you if this resonates with you, because this resonates with me. And, you know, it broke open something for me last weekend. And I'm going to have a lot of podcast guests for you this summer and going into the fall and next year. And the future of Fit Mama podcast is me. And sometimes interviews with amazing guests that I've found all around the world for any number of beautiful things that are the work in to your workout because it's about the inner size and you're going to feel a heck of a lot more like lifting weights and going to the gym and taking care of yourself and doing your pelvic floor exercises and inner sizes, pearl pull-ups and all the rest. If you know that you are going to get treated, right? Your man is going to be down there, right? All the goods are waiting for you if you let yourself be treated like a queen. Treat yourself like a queen. Demand to be treated like a queen by treating your king like a king. He deserves it. He deserves it. You deserve it. That's all for me today. I love you. Take care. Talk soon. Reach out. Have a great day. Namaste, Fit Mama. 